Hi everybody. There's a very good chance when you're working with text, you'll be checking for whether text value actually exists. I know, it seems really bizarre. And the reason is this, the string variables that we often deal with are really great for storing text values, you know, no problems there, but they get a little weird when checking for edge cases, especially on checking whether they're empty, null, or undefined, which is often something you run into in not just data that you generate, but especially if you're validating input from a field or requesting data from a third-party API, it's pretty important for you to be able to check whether that data actually has some values behind it, especially if data is a string. So let's look at a handful of approaches that I've used in the past that you can also use for being able to check whether your string actually has a value. Now, 99% of the time, the thing you're gonna check for is solvable by using this approach. If you have your string value, your variable, then if that, value, if that executes to true, you're in good shape, do something. And uh, the way this works is that what we're checking for is that the value that your string contains is not a false C value. There's no false zero, negative zero, zero N, empty quotation marks, null, undefined, or NAN. As long as your string is anything but these values, you're in a good spot. You can totally make this work just fine. Now, there's some edge cases where this may not always work, and this probably doesn't apply to you, but if you really want to, you can also just check for this. If we're checking for an empty string, use the triple equal sign, and you're good to go. And this tells us majority of the cases we'll be running into as well. So if the previous approach doesn't work, you can use this to check for an empty string. And I'll show you the approach that I typically use, and that is the value up shown here, which is really, you know, exclamation mark, exclamation mark string value is almost the equivalent of just typing in Boolean the actual constructor boolean, and then in parentheses a string, and then calling trim, which remo removes the white space from the beginning and the end. And I typically use this because it is performant, and it covers almost all the edge cases that I would have run into because I've done a lot of string checking, especially when there's data from a database and, and all these other edge cases that people can put in all kinds of data that may look like a string, may not look like a string. It might look empty to us, but behind the scenes is encoded with some other characters. This type does a good job ensuring that all those are kind of taken care of. So you have about three different layers of I guess, complexity in checking for whether you have a string that actually exists or not. So there you have it, a lightning fast overview of the various approaches you can use for checking whether a string is empty, null, or undefined. Use any one of the approaches you think makes sense. There is no right or wrong approach, but you should definitely have a lot of test cases to make sure that if you do have, you know, anticipate input being very random and varied, that your approaches tend to catch all of them and make sure your code does the right thing. So if you found this helpful, please post in the forums at forum.group.com where I and others will be able to help you out. And lastly, tell your friends and enemies all about it if you like this video. Even if you don't like this video, that's cool. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos. Follow me at Group on Twitter for smaller updates on interesting web development topics. And lastly, if you like watching videos, great. But if you like reading things in a paperback edition, even better. There's a book available, links available at the bottom for all the books I've written and probably will be writing by the time you see this video as well. And with that, I will see you all next time.